see so many people gathered here for Ralph's funeral, so in particular, welcome to Susie and family and friends, staff and colleagues from our local hospitals here in great numbers, and also welcome to those who may be joining us on the live stream, I hope it's all working for you. We come together um, with our mixture of the emotions of gratitude and sadness but also we come together to do three things today. Uh, to give thanks for Ralph's life, as it says in the booklets. Um, to recognize the gifts he brought to so many people, and we'll be hearing about that a little later on. But we also come with faith and hope in the resurrection of Jesus and the hope of eternal life for all of us. That hope is symbolized by the Easter candle close to and by the sprinkling of holy water, a symbol we use to remind us of our baptism. We also come together, perhaps most importantly, to pray for Ralph because we believe that our prayers can help him on the journey he's now embarking on. A journey beyond time and space as we know it, but to something more glorious. We now place the symbols of that faith onto his coffin. In life we cherish the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet Ralph with these words of eternal life. Come blessed of my Father. In baptism, we receive the sign of the cross. May Ralph now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. O God Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Ralph will have fallen in the sleep of Christ. We rejoice to rise again through you, free as a rage with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we sing for the first week.
a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. The length of days is not the next stage honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding this man's grey hairs, untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him as he was living among sinners. He has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treacherously seduce his soul. But the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade and the whirlwind of desire corrupts the simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the wickedness round him, yet people look on uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy awaits the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy one. <clears throat> this is the word of the Lord. I have the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green, where it gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Response. <laughs> he guides me along the right path. He is truthful to his name. If I should walk the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are here with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and the kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. This readings from Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with him to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, we should comfort one another. Thanks, Peter. We stand now for the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It is my Father's will, says the Lord. That whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. As I said at the beginning, we do three things as we gather today. We remember Ralph and give thanks for his life. And we look forward with faith and hope. And we gather to pray for him. You all come with your particular memories of Ralph, from family, from work, from social life, and some of those will be shared towards the end of our service. So what is this hope and faith that we talk about? This is why we have, well, one reason why we have the readings from Scripture at the Christian funeral. Those readings we've heard, both from the Old Testament and the New Testament, they are not downbeat. They are not mournful readings. They are actually full of hope and good advice. Because funerals are not just about looking backwards, they're also about looking forwards to a life beyond death. In fact, one of the prayers you might listen to and hear a little later in the Mass says that for God's chosen people in death, life is changed. Not ended, it's changed. So this is not about putting a full stop at the end of Ralph's life. It's about being with him as he continues into something rather mysterious, but definitely glorious and better. When St. Paul writes to the theologians, that was the theologians, that was the, um, the second reading, he says, don't grieve about those we have lost like those who have It's very down to earth, really. He doesn't say that don't grieve about them because he knows we will grieve about people we have lost. That is right and normal, and in fact, it's an expression of our love for that person, and we know that love doesn't end. But he says don't grieve like those without hope because we grieve in a different way. At a human level, of course, we miss that person. But actually, in, in, at a spiritual level, we know there's something better. We know that Jesus has gone ahead of us so that we can experience nothing less than eternal life. We don't know what that looks like. We're not told exactly. But as I said in the beginning, we kind of have to engage our minds and our imaginations to go beyond time and space as we know it. And commend Ralph for that amazing journey. <clears throat> we also know that all those concepts are a little difficult to grasp because we, our minds aren't built to connect with the afterlife very easily. But if we feel a bit like that, we're in good company because the last reading we had was from the Gospel. It tells us a bit about when Jesus was preparing his own disciples, his own followers, for his departure. And they don't really get it. He offers them great words of hope and consolation. Don't let your hearts be troubled. In other words, don't worry. Trust in God. 
There are many rooms in my father's house. I'm going to come and take you with me. And yet still, we know, Thomas says those rather famous words, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? We often feel that way ourselves. And Jesus replies, not with a direct answer, giving us a roadmap about the way, but giving us a person, giving us himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. As far as we know, these words offered the reassurance that was needed at the time. They should offer us the reassurance as well. And that final thing I mentioned at the beginning, that reason why we gather is to pray. This whole service, of course, is part of our prayer. Listening, as we will later on, to some aspects of Ralph's life, that can be part of our prayer. In a few moments' time, the family will lead us in some prayers of intercession, but our prayer for Ralph doesn't end here in this church or this morning or at the crematorium. It can continue. Sometimes we think when someone has died and we've done all the arrangements and we've made all the practical, organisational stuff, all that is done, what more can we do? Well, we can always, in our hearts, pray. That does two things, really. It keeps up our connection with that person, but it also helps that person as their life continues towards eternity. We're now going to have our prayers of intercession. <coughs> Let us in faith call upon God the Almighty Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. So that the will go to have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dad spent his career caring for sick children. He prayed for all the sick, that you may help and heal them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Many of you here are from the Royal Alex. Please pray for all nurses, doctors and staff. Bless them that they, may, that they may be a blessing to their patients. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. The family and friends of Ralph seek comfort and consolation. Heal our pain and dispel the darkness and pain that came from grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. Let us pray for Father Kieran and all the servants of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. And may the prayer of those who pray to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins and make them sharers of your redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Mass continues with the presentation of the gifts of bread and wine.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine of your people. For to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual. Let us Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O of Lord, for the salvation of your servant, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find you. A merciful torch, he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them ever. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven. We sing the hymn of your glory, as without him we acclaim it. Holy, holy, holy Lord of all of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and the Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, as the Son and the Christ. Please, uh, for the new person. You are indeed the holy of the Lord, the fount of all grace. You made holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministry. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ 
us. You may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Ralph, who you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son and their death by his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, or come them into the light of your peace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to his family, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
to your Holy Communion, please uh, wait to be invited by the stewards. And if you don't normally receive Holy Communion, but you'd like to receive a blessing, you can indicate that by placing your cross in your hand and cross your chest.
One could never be under any illusions that Ralph had a work family. The children have told me how they'd be at school. Someone would hear the surname Darmstrong, yes, that name then, and say, is yours Aunt Ralph and you're Alex? And it was the same for us. Wherever we went, someone would recognise Ralph. But three occasions really strike me. First, on our wedding day, we're having our photos taken on the front, and who do we bump into? But, the, but a woman, some of you will know, Kathy Matthews, very special to us. Second, this past August, just a month before Dad's diagnosis, we bumped into Tess McKenna, who was my nursing mentor back on Tarkov 22 years ago. The very ward where Ralph and I met and fell in love. And lastly, can you believe it, in the hospice, the cleaner knew Ralph. He'd nursed her diabetic son 30 years before, and you still remembered him. So to his patients, he was, as you know, a legend. He just seemed to bond with his patients, even if they didn't support the army. Don't ask me why, but they seemed to love his awful jokes and dark banter. He made what could have been dreaded admissions bearable and horrid procedures manageable. There simply never will be enough Ralph. And I'm afraid those dreadful jokes, nicknames and dark banter extended to his colleagues. I've had such lovely card messages from so many of you and they say things like, he taught me everything I know. And Anne Davison said he was one of the best nurses she'd ever had the privilege of working with, and then there were the lovely things Liz said in the newspaper. And talking of level seven, Ralph's work home since 2007. I don't think Ralph, the boys, or I would have coped with his retirement, and then um, I don't really want to talk about the disease, you know. Without you, Lord, you've just supported us emotionally and practically. Can bringing me food and everything. <laughs> I never want to leave the dynamic daycare group and find out all about your milk rota. <laughs> and to his football family, Alan, Neil, Kieran, Steve and others. It seems, perhaps to my eyes, the senior go seven games unbeaten. Something's going on. I know you will keep Ralph's memory alive not least on your away trips. Let's just hope when Jack turns 18 and comes along with you, he's got a stronger constitution than that. And I, to finish, I just wanted to let you know that Ralph had a good death, something we all learned about in our nurse training. It's so fitting that after a lifetime of caring, he was cared for so beautifully by the team at the Marbles. He died peacefully on New Year's Day with Tara, Daniel, Rosie, and I at his side. Rest in peace, darling Ralph. Departed, but not forgotten. Oh. And oh, yeah, as Ralph could say, might say in his own words, later losers. <laughs> um, and just if anybody. Wanted to donate anything. There were two charities that I would have liked. One's the Marlers, but I'd say that's got a really great fundraising machine behind it, but also Sussex Homeless Charity. Um, it just doesn't turn anybody away. It seems really appropriate. Thank you. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Ralph, and now we come to the last one. 
there is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. <coughs> Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ralph in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he shall rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In faith let us take Ralph to his place of rest.